Well, we have an exciting show today, don't we? That's right. We got Matt Rogers, and he is with a firm that is a trusted advisor of a lot of these emerging uh, enterprises that we talk to, and probably is an emerging enterprise. Uh, his firm is an emerging enterprise by itself, which we'll learn more about. But Matt is with Solution Built, and they design mobile apps, websites, online marketing stuff, and they are the ones that are helping the people that are in the world of the internet kind of grow their business. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Did I cover that fairly accurately? Yes, I think you hit it right on the head. So I would imagine you work with a lot of your clients are emerging enterprises. Um, yes. I mean, we do have a lot of customers that are everything from a startup to, you know, using new technology right. to existing businesses that are trying to reform and automate processes and use technology in their business. Now, you've mentioned before the show that you've been around this space since the 90s. Correct. And... Um, what have you seen in the growth of this? I mean, it went from a situation, as I recall, that people were just taking their brochures that they had in their, you know, on top of a filing cabinet and then cutting and pasting it and putting it, and that was their website. And now we're in a world that everything's interactive and there's 50 million places to put a website. You gotta, I can't just have a website. i got to have a mobile website. i got to have a mobile app. i got to have something for the, uh, you know, the iPad. Yeah, I mean, I think that with the advent of the iPhone and, and iPad and these handheld devices that, that you have access, I mean, I don't know if you remember ever having a Palm Trio, but uh, mobile apps weren't too exciting back then. And you were still you still looked great and looked cool with holding right. that, that Palm Trio. But uh, now uh, users really can see um, the importance of having their website or, or uh, some sort of utility uh, in the palm of their their client's hands or their target audience's hands. Now, is the, do people use um, like a mobile website the same way they use as a desktop website? To a certain degree, um, I think uh, you know usually in a with a mobile website or app, you're basically scaling back and really um, guiding the user to go through a particular function mm-hmm. or present utilities in a in a different and interesting way. A lot of times the content is scaled back, though, so that's very simple and easy to use because you're limited to, you know, screen size and resolution. Right. Now, um, so can you walk us through if one of your clients says, hey, you know what, I'm thinking of getting into the mobile space and I want to to have a mobile app or a mobile website, whichever is more appropriate. How do you kind of counsel them? Well, first, I mean, the biggest thing is really getting an understanding of somebody's idea. Um, you know, they may have this, the greatest idea in the world, but if they're not – you know, tech, technically uh, proficient or, or or what have you, they may not be able to put that idea out there so that you can quickly understand it. So right. what we like to do is go through an exploration to sit with them um, and truly understand what they are wanting to do and explore those options and give them some sort of, uh, you know, uh, solution. Right. Um, once we do that, that's when you actually start looking at, you know, how long is this project going to take? And, and a good way to go th- find out, you know, the time and cost of a project is actually to go into what we call an information architecture phase, in which we can actually create a blueprint or an HTML prototype of what their app will actually do and how it would be perform- Without perform- fully building it. Exactly. And they can actually run it on their iPhone or their iPad or their Android device, just as if a normal user would, to ensure that we're meeting their vision and, you know, the solutions that we come up with will work for their business. Now, is there ever time that you go, you know what, maybe where you're at right now or the budget you have, maybe you're just not ready yet for a mobile solution. All the time. So, uh, yeah. You know, you have to pick your customers wisely because um, these projects, you know, it's not a two-week project. I mean, you're going to be working side by side for for months on end mm-hmm. um, until you finish the project. So sometimes we may just help the customer identify kind of what the requirements are the potential cost, and then when they're ready, we may go into the full build of the project, the design and development. So, okay. like, make it into, like, multiple phases and then just slowly into, into, um, create it over time? Yes. Do yeah. you guys uh, ever get clients that come in? I, I used to be in the video department. I get a video business. You used to get this all the time. They come in, and they say, I want an app. And you say, what do you want? And they go, I don't know, but I need an app. Everyone's got an app. So... Yes, we get that a lot, Mm -hmm. and we also get, like, I want an app, and it's going to do X, Y, and Z in three sentences. Well, you know, it's hard to really kind of read between those lines and and make sure that you're going to build something that's meaningful. (laughs) 
Now, when you're working with um, uh, somebody, if you decide together that, okay, an app is the way to go, is it automatic that you build an app that works on Android and iPad and and um, the iPhone? Does that all come together, or are these actually separate projects? It can. I mean, there's multiple ways to develop an app. Um, you could use HTML technologies, or you can use something that's native code in which you actually have to build a separate code base uh, for the target devices. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, it's really about you know, your user base and your target audience and what devices they're using. So we try to look at that to determine what the proper phases are. So you may start with, you know, Android and do an iPhone and iPad app later, or you may reverse things. It really right. just depends on the use of the app. Are there, is one easier than the other, or it doesn't matter to you guys? It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, we prefer the Apple devices. I think they're much more sexy, but Android, you know, they definitely have more reach right. uh, with over 100,000 different devices that you have to potentially program for. So you kind of have to meet some middle ground and and really kind of understand what that target audience is and, and code for the most popular devices. And what is the typical uh, business case for creating an app? Like what is the customer typically trying to uh, achieve by having an app? Is it to sell something? Is it to... Just educate the marketplace, or like, how are they using the apps? We see, I mean, you know, anything from somebody that has an idea for Angry Birds, right? Which, uh, so you make games too? Uh, we do some game development, mm-hmm. um, but we also see uh, we do a lot in building apps that um, access internal systems, um, uh, keep employees and and. Um, HR departments, you know. Oh, so sometimes it's internal. It's not even at for the, really the public consumption? Correct. Um, a lot of people are using apps in business now that um, really kind of just are used for internal uses for marketing or updating, you know, employees on uh, company initiatives and what have you. Now, that's that's probably a shift because I would think initially most people would be using it for some marketing purpose, that it wouldn't be internal training or internal communication. Yeah, I mean, you would think so, but with Apple, they're very stringent on just publishing up a marketing app. Right. Um, say, for instance, you're a sync manufacturer, they're probably much more likely to approve an app that um, has your catalogs and all the different fixtures and so forth. But if the app is purely solely just for marketing and doesn't have any reference or utility to it, um, they usually reject those type of oh, apps. Oh, so they may reject it. It's not a guarantee that you build an app that Apple will re- will allow it to be on their apps, Apple Store? No, no. And they have some strict guidelines, so we try to stay on top of that and make sure that we're guiding our customers, you know, in that exploration phase that, yeah, your idea is doable or this is the best approach of how to distribute this, whether it be internally only or published out to the public in the app stores. Um, uh, how have you guys found, uh, have you, has your business increased any? Because I know uh, when the iPhone first came out, it wasn't very hardened in, um, for internal use, businesses didn't like to use it because uh, giving um, um, sensitive information over the iPhone and transferring it over apps was very dangerous and people could get it really easily. I know they've really hardened their, their operating system. Um, has that increased your business any? Um, I think so. I mean, there has been a mobile shift, um, you know, over the past Five, three to five years, we were really preaching that, you know, mobile is the next step. And and everybody kind of understood that, but they didn't know how that would look in their business environment, how, you know, how difficult it will be, what the best plan would be. And then, you know, once these devices started getting um, out there and people were buying iPhones and iPads, I think they started realizing that, yeah, you know, we have to go this way. Right. And it's something that's going to be very important for us to, you know, make sure that we're competitive in our business or we automate a process or we, you know, have a streamlined, you know, internal messaging system or, or marketing packet for our uh, team members to use. Um, so now do you guys also coach your clients with social media? Does that we do um, a lot of, you know, online marketing that we we do, um, you know, we've we've probably built about five social networks from the ground up. And, and put them out there. So we're very familiar with that space. So a lot of the uh, apps or, or marketing initiatives that we do have some sort of social media twist. Um, we also do some online marketing, such as search engine optimization. Everybody hears that term or may get 10 spam emails a day 
you know, saying somebody can do it for you for ninety nine dollars, and right. you know, we'll number get you one at Google. Yeah, right. number one at Google. Doesn't everybody want mm-hmm. that? Um, you know, it takes a lot of time to do that. So we actually do a lot of content creation and distribution, and we'll use social media channels as a distribution point, um, just to kind of keep and build their fan base. Not only do we do that, but we also do you know prizing and giveaways and enter to win type of things to help build companies fan bases. So um, that's that kind of gamification is an important component of I think apps so. and uh, social media strategy? Yeah, I think so. I mean, if uh, you look like at any gaming console or social media, there is some sort of, you know, funness to it. So right. I think it's important to kind of embed that in, into a project. Now, um, what are what's the sweet spot for you in terms of clients? Is it, you mentioned startups, but is it also kind of more established firms? Yeah, I mean, our sweet spot is more established firms. Um, now, they can be more difficult to deal with because there's more layers uh, than what you'd have in a startup. Um, but, I mean, anybody of size that, that has a budget and a great idea and is fun to work with, that really is our sweet spot because we like to get along with our customers and want to make sure that we have a long-lasting relationship. You know, doing something once is, is fun, but having that customer – there for you. Customer for life kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Do you guys get a lot of return customers? We do. Um, you know, I mean, we started our business, you know, up in North Georgia and in, in Atlanta working with friends and family. And, um, you know, those, those, some of those first customers are still with us, growing with us, you know, starting with their, their first website to doing some social media to even doing mobile things now, you know, a mobile website or mobile apps. Do you ever work with, like, kind of ad agencies? We have. Um, we Where do. They kind of white label your stuff or use you as a resource for their clients. We we have. Yeah, we worked with a lot of agencies here in Atlanta, um, and you know that's really when you get to work with some of the bigger names uh, in the business, and and that's always fun. Now, um, if a company was going to engage with you, uh, and you mentioned this kind of, uh, uh, it's kind of a research portion where you're kind of feeling each other out and seeing if you have a solution for them. How does that work when you're working with an ad agency where, like, it's the ad agency's client and they're bringing you on to do just kind of this one sliver of their business? Yeah, and a lot of times they have their idea fully baked. Right, um, and they're and, just saying, make this. Yeah, just right. make this yeah. and make this widget and send it to us, you know, and they usually give you about three days to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are you done yet? Yeah, oh, exactly. Right. But, you know, that's always fun. I mean, we've we've been up all hours of the night to meet mm-hmm. deadlines, and um, that's, I think, one thing that makes us tick, we do enjoy that type of work. Uh, but the same token, I mean, you know, sometimes a lot of ad agencies come to us with no idea. And, you know, it is a kind of a consultative approach to kind of get and, and build a solution that they promise their client. So then they're, they're not an expert in whatever area that you're, they're working with you on. They might be good at maybe media buying, but they may have no idea how to build a mobile app something like that. Right, exactly. They have a great idea of what they want it to do, but as far as the, the, the exec- back-end process and how long it will take... Right, they, have um, no cl- they don't have the staff or they don't have the skills right. to execute that. And, and they'll use a firm like ours to help them you know, meet those needs. So where do you see this going? I mean, like mobile seems to be changing kind of rapidly in the sense that there's always a new device, and now that you know the iPad mini's out there, like there's all kinds of new tablets and new... Is that what you have there? No, I have a Kindle. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> the Apple Mini, though, I don't even think it's out. You have one? No, I'm. You know, a developer like you doesn't get one. I know. Well, I need to be in line, but exactly. you know, uh, we had the iPad Mini and the new iPad come out yesterday. Right. So, um, Apple does get a lot of my money, um, and you know, it, it's fun playing with the new devices. I mean, we always in line trying to get get them once they come out, but. I don't know about the Apple Mini yet. I mean, you're not sold on. I'm the, not sold the tablet on tablet that's littler. No, same tab- I mean, I think they'll just make it a phone at the end Eventually. of the day. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it won't be a bigger iP- iPod Touch. Some we'll see. combination of that. So, but how do you keep up? Like, you have to buy the stuff. You have to start playing with it. You have to see what the the optimal way that the customer even uses it. Yes, I mean, you know, we have basically all these legacy devices that we use for quality assurance. Um, with older versions of, you know, the software, iOS or, or Android software. Right. Um, so we have to actually keep all these devices and can't upgrade them. So every time Apple comes out with a new device <laughs> gotta, or a new OS, you gotta, 
we have to basically just lock that that device down so we can reuse it and test in case there's a problem or we need to do right. some bug fixes. So um, is people would use the devices in different ways. Like I know in my house I have an iPad, I have a Kindle, and we have laptops. Every device in our house is used slightly differently. You know, the my kid has the iPad while watching TV. He's doing stuff on it. I have the Kindle that I use as my tablet where I'll keep it by my bed to read at night, but also I can check my emails. So how do you kind of create a solution that is best for each device in the way that the customer actually is using it? Well, I mean, you brought up a good point where, you know, your son is sitting there watching TV and he's surfing around on the iPad. Right. Uh, handheld usage while people are watching TV is at an all-time high. Um, you know, I mean, if you look at the percentages, I'd have to defer to my marketing experts to give you that exact percentage, but it is at an all-time high. So um, one thing that we really like to do to when a customer comes to us with a requirement is really look at their digital marketing plan as a whole. Um, because there's multiple touch points that we'll be able to um, take advantage of and help them, you know, use these mobile apps or mobile websites. So you kind of have to look at their marketing plan as a whole and then figure out a solution that would, you know, embrace that current marketing plan and how we can get the app or what have you out there in their hands. Because isn't it true, like, the a person using their iPhone, it isn't just for making calls, right? They're using it for a hundred things. It could yeah. be finding what restaurant to go to right now to, you know, I got a, uh, it could be like you were saying is sales training. It could be like, Oh, I'm about to meet my customer. So I better learn these three things to say to them. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's always in the palm of your hand and your point of reference. I mean, people are doing all types of things with their mobile devices. Um, actually mobile search surpasses desktop search period. I mean, there are more people searching for businesses or solutions or going to Google just doing a search than using their desktop. Well, now when you're out at dinner, if you just have a question, instead of going, oh, do you know this? You just look it up on your phone, and, and it's right at your fingertips, which is makes you Makes you an expert <laughs> on all your dates, <laughs> right? Yeah, it, it makes me seem smart. <laughs> but the computer power inside of a mobile device is more than probably what took people to the moon, Right. Right. I mean, I remember my 8088 playing Frogger, you know. I mean, <laughs> you thought that was a, a big deal, right? I thought we were done there, you <laughs> <Right>. know. <laughs> How could it, it get better, better than this? Exactly. <laughs> and you think about that today. I mean, you know, a lot of people, um, if I go back and, and pick up an old iPhone 4 or 3, you know, it's still a lot of technology. Right. And we're only getting better and faster and, and building things that are seamless. Um, so that's good job security use. for you, right? I good hope so. <laughs> So um, what do you see in the future for your firm? Uh, what do I see in the future? I mean, you know, we we may go a few different ways. Uh, we're really going to stay, you know, with our feet planted here in Atlanta um, and, and try to go grow with our account base. Um, but I think mobile is definitely going to be a critical part of our growth as well as our service offering. Do you have customers all over the place? Or are you we mostly do. here in Atlanta? We, most of it is in Atlanta, but we do have customers all over the world uh, that we've worked with. Uh, and, you know, I mean, I think right now, um, you know, it's it's good for us to stay where we're at in Atlanta. I mean, we're, we're a lot of our people were, you know, born here and, and right. went to school in, that, in Georgia. So and a lot of contacts here, a lot of relationships, business relationships here. Yes, sir. Now, um, in the future when you guys are growing, is it something that you think that you're going to have to uh, – use a lot of outsourcing to, to execute this or do you have like kind of homegrown people who are actually building this stuff? A lot of it is homegrown, but you know, depending on the deadline of a customer, right. um, we may have to bring in somebody for a short duration or for a long term part of the project, uh, whether that be a full time hire or whether that be outsourcing a little piece of the project. Uh, as being an agency, we have multiple things going on from anything from, you know, search marketing efforts to websites right. to you know, video production and design. And um, so, so, you know. your needs are very nimble, right? They have to be able to kind of add and subtract as you need them. Right, yeah. exactly. How, how do you guys get uh, your customer base? Is it mostly word of mouth or how do you guys do that? A lot of it's word of mouth. Um, you know, uh, we, we have a good, I guess, relationship with a lot of people here in Atlanta, agencies um, as well as customers. Uh, so, you know, we, we don't really go to networking events. We right. really... I mean, 
Just treat your customer uh, home, right, home and then, grown. Uh, yeah, it takes it. care of itself. Now, um, can you share any success stories? Maybe somebody who got into the mobile world that hadn't been in it and they got some success. Um, yeah, you, we, you don't have to use names if you don't want to. I, yeah, I won't use a name, but we have a customer that's in the medical industry um, that basically, you know, had a really, really great business. And what they were doing is um, they were using web technology to, you know, automate some medical. Um, basically messaging systems. Um, they actually took their web-based process and allowed us to actually create an app for them um, that really simplified everything for the doctors that were using right. this app because they had it in the palm of their ha- hands and they were they were notified every time there was a new message for them. So the turnaround times were far better. And you know, with that, it really kind of helped them come to the next level as far as their service offering because not only did they have you know these great web portals great staff um but they also have a mobile suite right you know of of services that they can offer and it's really helped their business a lot they've grown so you do you do a lot of work with medical or that just happened to be a medical case uh we do a lot in medical space i mean i think that um doctors are are very forward thinking they they probably touch technology that we could only imagine so it's really, you know, easy for them to understand the usage, you know, the uses of the mobile devices and how that can be, you know, help automate and make more time for them to spend with their families or what right. have you. Now, when you're working with a medical client, I'm sure a lot of their issues are privacy issues. Yes, HIPAA privacy is, is huge. Right. So if you can figure that out, then the other stuff's probably easy, right, yes. once you have to deal with all that. You're right. Now, um, do you work with, uh, you mentioned medical, is it doctor's office, like individual doctors, or is it more like health care or health IT? Health IT, health software companies, um, hospitals. Mm-hmm. And it, Atlanta is a good market for that? I, I heard a lot of stats at Venture Atlanta that Atlanta is one of the top health IT um, cities in the country. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of people here that are utilizing apps in the medical field. Right. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to learn more, do you have a website for Solution Built? Yeah, just check us out, solutionbuilt.com. That's S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-B-U-I-L-T. And is there an app for that? Do you have an app for your business? We don't have time for that. (laughs) It's the cobbler's children, right? (laughs) Exactly. So you have no mobile app for you guys? Not one. But is your website mobile friendly? I would say it's mobile accessible, but mobile you know accessible. we 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 don't really have time to actually put our things that we preach into practice in our <laughs> own business. Yourself. We have to take care of everybody else. else first. Good stuff. So at Solution Built, they'll be able to see maybe some uh, examples of your work and some of your clients that you work with and some of the different companies you've done work with. Yes, sir. Good stuff. Well, Matt Rogers, thank you so much for being part of the show. This is Lee Cantor and Kevin Finn. For all of the Business Radio X family, we will see you all next time on Emerging Enterprise.